Since the 26th of November, farmers across the country have been protesting against the three farm bills introduced by the government of India earlier this year, along with which ran multiple disinformation campaigns. In today's episode, we'll explain everything you need to know about the farmers' protests in India. First, what were the three bills that the farmers found contentious? The Farmers' Empowerment and Protection Agreement on Price Assurance and Farm Services Bill 2020, the Farming Produce Trade and Commerce Promotion and Facilitation Bill 2020, and the Essential Commodities Amendment Bill of 2020. Now let's simplify this. The highlights of this bill are A. Contract farming, where buyers get into a legal agreement with farmers before buying their produce. B. Price assurance or predetermined pricing, where farmers are assured a certain price for their produce. And C. Dispute settlement mechanism, where potential disputes between buyers and farmers are settled by an authority. Now, all of this looks good on face value. But let's dig a little deeper on what this actually means. Now, the government claims that this bill will change Indian agriculture and attract private investment. With private investment comes better quality, better access to modern technology, and thereby increase in farmers' income. But Farmers fear that this would lead to large corporations taking advantage of them. First of all, farmers would be directly exposed to the global market. In other words, a fluctuating global market would force farmers to sell their produce at a much cheaper rate than what was agreed on. Secondly, since the new reforms don't allow farmers to seek redressal at civic courts, farmers will be competing with private investors' heavyweight legal firms in case a deal goes wrong. Highlights of this bill are A. Trading outside APMC or Mondays, wherein farmers can sell their produce anywhere outside the designated APMC yards, storehouses, warehouses, or anywhere inside or outside the state. And 2. Less or no government intervention, where the government aims to introduce the concept of a free market in the agriculture sector. Again, this bill gives farmers A. The freedom of sale and purchase since they aren't contained to the restrictions of the APMC. B. Farmers get to engage in direct marketing since the intermediaries are eliminated. And C. With intra and interstate trading, it will boost electronic transactions and trading. However, here's the catch. With this bill, the farmers would be directly entering the free market, which means their income would be predominantly dependent on the ups and downs of the market. In contrast to the APMC, where they are given a minimum support price by the government. In other words, due to market fluctuations, if farmers are caught between high production cost and low cost of their produce, the government will not intervene to offer subsidies or procurement, in contrast to what used to happen in the past, which will very likely result in private investors taking advantage of their produce. And here's the thing, the farmers' fears aren't irrational. One such example is Bihar's abolition of the regulated markets, which slowed down the growth in agricultural sector in 2006. Previously, the government could control the rate and availability of certain commodities, especially essential commodities, so that it was available to an average citizen at an appropriate rate and amount. But the amendment removes the essential status from certain commodities. These include produce like cereals and potatoes. And currently, there are nine such commodities in this list. So a highlight of this bill is that it lessens government intervention again, since the government's control over selling certain commodities at an affordable price is scoped, thereby giving entry to private players. Now with this bill, the prices of these commodities are obviously bound to increase. And most importantly, according to the clause, the government will only regulate, or in other words, get these items back into the essential commodities list in extreme situations. So in situations like war, national calamities, etc. Now according to a few experts, this bill could actually be beneficial to farmers since it would increase their income. But at the same time, due to lesser government intervention, private players could hold produce and manipulate prices, thereby giving monopoly to a few private players. Now that we summarized the laws and why the farmers are protesting, let's talk about how the government is handling the protests. Farmers led multiple protests against the bill, and the government tried its best to squash them. From spraying water cannons and tear gas, to even digging up trenches and putting up barricades, authorities resorted to all means necessary to stop the farmers to protest in New Delhi. In one such instance, a protester who turned off the water cannons, which was being sprayed on protesters in the midst of North India's harsh cold, was charged with attempt to murder. These, along with many other instances, highlight the brutish and unfair handling of the entire situation by the government, along, obviously, with other misleading information about the protests. On the 5th of December, farmer groups held hour-long discussions with the government, where the farmer leaders said that they will not accept anything lesser than the withdrawal of the bills and the union leaders refusing their demands. 
According to a few reports, the central government has asked for more time to come up with a concrete proposal, to which the farmer groups have agreed. Prominent leaders of the opposition issued a joint statement on December 6, in solidarity with the farmers. A new proposal by the government was sent to the farmer leaders on the 9th of December, which will hopefully decide the direction of the trajectory. Hi! Thanks for watching Logically India. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and leave a thumbs up. Along with these episodes, we make fact-checking episodes on a weekly basis. So if there's anything you want us to fact-check, let us know in the comment section below. Or download the Logically app for quick fact-checking services. This is Team Logically, signing out.